considering the Butchered and Butterfly Gardens excursion on your next cruise to Victoria? Learn the pros and cons now from cruisingsecrets.com. We'll cover how to get there, things to do, and how to make the most of your trip, coming at you right now. Upon arriving in Victoria, Canada, you'll need to prepare for your excursion and go to your meeting spot. There were a lot of people going to the Butchered Gardens through either a direct excursion or some sort of combo excursion like our Butterfly Garden excursion. On Ovation of the Seas, we met in the main Royal Theater. There was a long line, but it moved pretty quickly. We were put into groups so that we could stay together for the duration of the excursion, and we exited the ship and passed by this little gift shop area. Now, there is a money exchange place here, and that could be important if you want to try to do this on your own. I'll get to that a little bit later. We headed to our bus and loaded up and began the nearly 45-minute drive to the Butterfly Gardens. It was our first stop. It's possible that some of these do the Butterfly Gardens after going to the Butchered Gardens, but for hours they did it first. You can see they're very close to each other, but they're both really far away from the actual cruise port. I've been doing some research, and it seems like it's possible to take the number 75 bus from downtown Victoria up to the Butchered Gardens, but it does take about an hour due to the number of stops along the way. The advantage to going on your own would be that you don't have to come back quite as soon. The excursion that we went on got us back several hours before our ship left, and we would have liked to have had that time to explore the gardens more, but instead we had to explore Victoria, which was nice in its own right. But next time, we might want to spend more time at the Butchered Gardens. Like I said, we went to the Butterfly Gardens first. This is a pretty quick stop, only about 30 minutes. And that was certainly enough time for us. If you wanted to take pictures of every flower and every butterfly and every bird, you had to move very quickly. But if you just want a sampling of these things and to spend some time in a room with a lot of butterflies and birds and flowers and frogs, it was plenty. It was pretty warm in this enclosure, so make sure you're wearing layers on this excursion so that way you can remove them if you start to get warm. You might even be able to leave your jacket on the bus, just ask your bus driver about that. At the time of this recording, admission is 1850 Canadian and 750 for children. These were of course included in our excursion fare, so we didn't have to pay this ourselves, but I thought it'd be nice to know if you were taking a bus trip up there on your own. I wouldn't recommend it as an excursion you really need to go on, but if you've done a lot in Victoria and want to see something different, it could be nice to check out. Since we got the same amount of time at the Butchered Gardens, basically if we had or hadn't done this, I thought it was worth the small additional charge to go and see these butterflies. After about 45 minutes, we loaded back up on the bus and went just down the road to the Butchered Gardens. Make very good note of which bus you're on and where it's at because there will be a lot of buses there. We were given our tickets as we got off the bus, so it was easy to just head to the entrance and go straight on in. You will start seeing flowers and vegetation everywhere, so if you're with someone who likes to take pictures of things, be prepared for them to get started immediately. There are quite a few different areas in the gardens that each have their own theme. The sunken gardens are certainly the most unique and photographed areas that you will see. If you've seen pictures of the butchered gardens, you've likely seen pictures of this area. Due to the amount of time it will take to get back to the cruise ship, you may only have about 90 minutes before you have to be back at the bus. With so many things to see, time management is a huge challenge. There isn't a single path that goes through all the gardens, so you can wander and meander a little bit, but keep checking the map to make sure that you're not going in circles or repeating areas too much, because you'll want to see as much of it as possible. There are lots of little side paths and areas that have unique plants and can give you great views. It's really relaxing, as long as you're checking your watch to keep an eye on the time. There is a carousel in the gardens, but I wouldn't recommend it. It doesn't have great views. It won't be busy, but there is a fee to ride it, so I would just avoid it. The fee isn't very much, so if you have kids that really want to ride a carousel, this might be an option to look at. There's a pretty big rose garden area, although it is nowhere near as big as the rose test garden in Portland. After seeing that garden, all the rose gardens that I've ever seen since have seemed a little underwhelming but this one is impressive when compared to most others. The Japanese garden was probably my second favorite portion of the gardens after the sunken gardens. So if you really wanted to focus on just two of the areas, those would be my picks. There's a sign for this butchered gardens lookout. I don't understand the appeal of it and I would just skip it to save time. I really don't know what you're supposed to see here. 
There are paths around the gardens that don't require steps, but there are many that do, so keep an eye out for those and plan ahead if you've got mobility issues. In the Italian garden area, there are some treats. I think it was some gelato or cake or cookie or something. Again, I would skip those because the amount of time that you'll spend actually trying to acquire those things is probably not worth it. The Mediterranean garden seems to be outside the main area, and it's a little hard to find, but you're not missing much if you don't make it over there. The gift shop is pretty expansive, so be sure to take a look at it if you have a few extra minutes. What's nice is that the gift shop is only about a five minute walk back to the bus. Just make sure you leave enough time to check out. And the gift shop will take US dollars if you have cash. Then it was time to load up on the bus and spend another 45 minutes heading back to the cruise port. The bus driver did tell us more about Victoria on the way back, and it's always great to see the ship. Do you see the North Star rising high overhead? I bet those people got to ride it for free because that's what we did, except in a different port. If you'd like to see a video on how to ride the North Star for free, look for a link on your screen or in the description below. I hope you've enjoyed this guide from cruisingsecrets.com. Check out our website and subscribe to our channel to keep an eye on all of our videos. Don't forget to share your secrets in the comments below.